I'm Dr. Sanjay Janeja, hematologist and medical oncologist. I'm here to answer your questions from the internet. This is Blood Support. First up, what happens if person gets injected with the wrong blood type? It's gonna be really bad, and that's because it recognizes that protein as foreign, as a virus, and it just goes rogue. It's just like destroy, 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 destroy. Generally, we treat it with like immediate steroids and may need to consult some very fancy people to try to churn the blood and get it right. We have a question from at Payden. Do we even know why we have different types of blood? Like really? And the answer is we don't. There's basically eight different basic ones that are different variations. You can have A, B, O, or some combination. And when we're saying those letters, it basically reflects an antigen or a protein on the surface of the red blood cells. But we do know that certain areas have more blood types than others. One of the main reasons is because of infections and viruses. For example, malaria likes to get into red blood cells and basically cause you all that sickness if you are type A. So you'll see more type O in those areas because they were less likely to die. Next question from Ryan Rodriguez. Could blood actually spray and or jettison from the human body as is sometimes seen in movie shows and games? The answer is yes. If you cut an artery, that pressure is higher. An artery is your oxygenated blood. It's the stuff that just got the oxygen from the lungs and is being pumped out. It's the top number on your blood pressure, and it carries oxygen and all the fuel and the stuff that all your cells need to the tissue. But when you're drawing blood, and the stuff that's the veins, it shouldn't be at the pressure to be shooting out at somebody. Veins are a passive, more limpy process because it's the bottom number of millimeters of mercury on your blood pressure. And it's the blood that is now deoxygenated. It's done its job and the red blood cells are coming back to get more oxygen into your lungs. At Garrett Sandlin, what the fuck is a hematologist dot 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 ellipsis question mark LOL a very nerdy person usually, that studies blood. When we think of blood, you think of the, the red stuff and it carries oxygen, but it's actually far more than that. It's constituted predominantly by three things. Red blood cells, right? They carry oxygen. They're like, ooh, give me oxygen lungs, and then they go deliver it to the rest of your body. But the other parts are white blood cells, the antibody stuff that you hear about vaccines that live for years. The third part is platelets. Platelets help you clot. They're the reason that when you get a cut, it actually closes up. Those are generally the three parts. And then the last one is what's called plasma. And plasma is this beautiful harmony balance of taking care of things when it comes to clotting and, and should you clot more, should you clot less, and fight infections. Point being, there's a reason that you have to do all of internal medicine for three years and then an additional one or two years in hematology just to understand how complicated this is. Next question by Dr. Moxie Combs Open. What exactly is a hemorrhage? A hemorrhage is a general term to just mean bleeding. So you could be hemorrhaging technically from your arm from a cut, but we usually use it in a colloquial sense to mean a lot. At S-P-I-I-D-Y-Y. What's the difference between red blood cells and white blood cells? Red blood cells are pretty much all the same thing in your body. They carry oxygen. Oxygen is the fuel on every cell in your body. White blood cells have all different kinds. There's neutrophils, and lymphocytes. Neutrophils are stuff that go up with bacterial infection and fight things when you inhale them all the time walking around. And then you have the lymphocytes, which is all that antibody stuff. Antibodies are smarter when it comes to attacking pathogens or viruses and stuff. That's why you get vaccines when you're young. They're already prepped and ready. They're hardwired because you gave them the wanted poster. They're kind of smarter Marines. And that's the whole concept behind vaccines as well as just getting an infection. Hosted by Champion K448. How do scabs work? Scabs are basically the evidence of the clotting process. The moment the endothelium, that is the inner lining of the red blood vessel, when it feels injury, it sends a whole cascade of markers and signals and say, yo, I'm like, I'm, I'm cut here. And then the platelets, which are the things that float in your bloodstream, they're actually yellow which is why they're found in plasma. They basically are the endothelium, the inside lining of the blood vessel floating around. And then they go to that point of the injury and then they get out these little tentacles and they latch on. And that's the platelet plug. And they start sending out a lot of signals. Yo, yo, come, we need to regenerate this. So when that platelet formation starts, then you start getting a blood clot after that. That is the immediate process that's happening to quickly restore that as fast as possible. Next question from at Magisha Elliott, my doctor friends, what causes a blood clot and how does it kill somebody? A blood clot is actually a complicated downstream series of events to make something that's hard and put together. That's clotting. 
we need to be able to clot, right? All the time. I mean, if you get a cut, you need to be able to clot it. However, you can have a clot that comes out randomly. This is an example of what happens if you get a blood clot, especially if this blood vessel was in your lungs, a pulmonary embolism, and you blocked the uh, blood flow entirely to be able to get oxygenated, you're in big trouble. Next question, at McCoy. What happens when you centrifuge blood? We are basically spinning down the blood. The blood has multiple components. It has the red blood cells that carry oxygen, it has plasma, it has white blood cells that fight infection, and it has those platelets. So today we'll be using an example back like science class of oil, vinegar, and dye. When you take that uniform solution and you wanna isolate your plasma, you put it into the machine, and then the centripetal force forces the densest thing to the outside. That's why it's angled. And now you have a nice separation. You have what looks like the plasma at the top, which is clear, and that's the stuff that if you get platelets or you're getting the plasma stuff in a hospital, you'll notice the bag is yellow. And it's different than when you're getting red blood cells. Next question, at I hate Trace. Hey Siri, there's still blood in my urine. How much is too much? If you were seeing blood in your urine, that's too much. Even having red blood cells that you can't see called microscopic hematuria. Any much is too much if you can see it. At Jacques Derrida, is blood really blue in the body? The blue concept is inaccurate. The veins appear blue, which are the lining or the piping that has the blood in it. At U-M-T-H-O-N-O-S, how does the blood pressure arm thing work? What a blood pressure cuff is doing is assessing what pressure is your heart pumping at. The left side of your heart is pumping blood all throughout your body. You continue to elevate the pressure until the pressure in the cuff is more than the pressure of your heart pushing the blood to the end of your fingers. And then you start to come down. So you're at 180, 170, 160, 150, 140, and then all of a sudden, you hear that top number of that strong left ventricle in your heart able to start pushing. That's when you know your top number. And eventually, the beat fades away. Why? Because the bottom number is the passive way that our blood, after it is done and given the oxygen to everything, it needs to come back to the heart to get more oxygen. By deft with many T's. Why do people faint when they see blood? The reason that we pass out in general is because if our blood vessels dilate, which is what's happening when you see something that's scary and your brain is not perceiving enough blood anymore. So the theory is through evolution, our bodies learned that I'm having trouble getting blood with oxygen and fuel to the most important organ in my body, the least I can do is completely collapse so I don't have to combat Newton's gravitational law like downward. Next question by Michaela Phillips at 98 Kala. Every time I'm on my period, I'm so confused how girls can bleed so much and still live. Your bone marrow is constantly making blood. And so if you were to check a reticulocyte, which is a baby blood vessel, it's cute, it's actually bigger than, than normal. You'll see that during and after your cycle, that reticulocyte count should be up. That's showing that your bone marrow is spitting out and trying to accommodate for the circumstances because your red blood cells all only live about 90 to 120 days. So it's always doing it and it knows when you need more. At Sir Jeff, 32, can someone die from high blood pressure? Like, this is a real question. The answer is yes, two times over. You can die from acutely high blood pressure, which means at that moment, too much you know, Adderall, cocaine, methamphetamines, because they raise your blood pressure. Now, the blood pressure itself will not you know, kill someone, but those blood vessels that are taking that insult from the heart, it's 200, it's 220, then if it cracks and pops open, now you're bleeding into your brain or anywhere else, and that can cause, obviously, immediate death. But then over time, the reason people are so obsessive about it is because that injury from that flow of that blood pressure over and over and over eventually start causing this kind of stuff plaque burdens and a little injury, and then now this coronary artery disease or cardiovascular disease is starting to clog up everything. And remember, the way that your heart functions, your brain functions, your kidneys function, all the things that are called vital organs start losing the amount of circulating blood and oxygen they need to operate correctly. Next question from at Mark Bisky. How often are new blood cells made and what are they made from? They're all made for the most part in the same place. They are made in the same place, and that's your bone marrow. When you break a chicken bone, you see that dark, you know, ruddy stuff. It's in the bone, within the bone itself. And they're basically prompted by stem cells. And your stem cells say, hey, I need some more. Your red blood cells live about 90 to 120 days. So when they're getting kind of recycled in the spleen and old, you make new ones from the bone marrow. This next question from Ari, weird question. Does anyone know if low white blood cell count is ever serious? If it's 
deviates from your baseline and you see this massive drop, then that generally is thought to be something to investigate or be serious. But what's crazy is in black Americans and as well as some other minority groups, ranges we have for normal are actually based for the most part on Caucasian Americans from like the 1980s. It took 10,000 healthy people and were like, you look really healthy, let's see what your number is, and said, this is what we consider normal. So up to one out of three to one out of five black Americans will actually repeatedly look low on the white blood cell count, but more specifically on the neutrophils. That's something to be said about ranges. So if you're ethnic and you're using the range of someone in America of what our cutoffs are, realize that we only know normal by sampling people and saying, you look healthy and this is what we think is normal. At Enoch underscore Nyans, what are the signs of leukemia? Leukemia is when something has gone very wrong, very, very wrong in your bone marrow. Your bone marrow has like a hierarchy and pecking order. You have just the number of cells that you need to differentiate and mature and grow. What leukemia happens is it's not regulated anymore. Cancer means unregulated cell growth. If you have acute leukemia, marked exhaustion, marked fatigue, your blood count is like super low uh, and you may be losing weight and you're exquisitely sensitive to getting infections and oftentimes you'll notice you start getting you know spots of little pinpoint red dots out of nowhere because your platelets are so low. At Jinnah to Imran, why do mosquitoes prefer some people? but wouldn't bite others. One of the main things that they're theorizing is if you have more CO2, which is bicarbonate, in your blood, apparently mosquitoes can kind of almost sense in the blood that has more bicarbonate. Also, depending on what type you have, supposedly, that may kind of trigger or have a predilection on what mosquitoes favor. But the truth is, it's quite complicated, and we all wish that Noah had just slapped those two mosquitoes. Well, that's all the questions. I really hope you learned something and appreciate the blood system more. We'll see you next time.